Um, Carbon has a great season this this spring 24 season. Um, a lot of varied titles of all different kinds. We have 11 books um, coming up this season. So the first book we're going to start out with Happy Purim Grover. Uh, this is the fifth of seven Sesame Street board books and the Sesame Street board books have doing, been doing well for Carbon. And it's Purim and Grover is celebrating. He bakes homotash and he dresses up in his costume, listens to the Purim story. Um, and extremely cute version. Sesame is very pleased with it, so I think this one will do well for us. Next. This book is a Detective, and this is a very cute story where the bear family is getting ready to celebrate for Passover, and the little bear is very interested in finding the afikomen, which is the broken piece of matzah that the kids look for at the end of the Seder, and then it's usually retrieved with a little gift or something in order for the Seder to continue. So the little bear is very excited. He's determined to find it, but he feels like he needs a little bit of help, so he takes one of his little animals on wheels, which you can sort of see here, and he turns it into an afiko sniffer, and it helps him find the afikomen at the end. Very cute Passover book. Next. This is our other Passover book. It's called Tyrannosaurus Saurus. Saurus is the Yiddish word for trouble or worry. And this is an adorable book. Uh, the illustrator is Elise Ambura, who has done several books for us and her animal illustrations are amazing. And in this story, we have the Tyrannosaurus Rex, who's ready to have a Passover Seder, but big surprise, none of the other dinosaurs are willing to be his guests because they are afraid that he's going to eat them. How is he going to solve that problem? You're going to have to read the book and figure it out. Really, really cute book. Next. This is Sophie's Monster Goes to Shul. This is a social and emotional learning story. And in this case, we have Sophie who has an imaginary monster that lives in her closet. And throughout this book, we see Sophie little by little starting to grow up and being ready to let go of her monster. And in this story, she takes the monster with her to the synagogue where it sits next to her as a big monster. And over time, it starts to sing and do other things. And finally, finally, Sophie writes a story and the monster becomes just a character in her story and she's finally ready to let the monster go. It's a very sweet book about a child growing up and really getting ready to fly solo. It's a very, very cute book. Next. Jewish Mindfulness for Kids. This is our second sort of social emotional learning book. Uh, this is written by Blanca Sisa, who is a yoga instructor and especially teaches kids. And here she takes mindfulness exercises and puts them into a Jewish context. So she has kids pretend to hold a challah in one hand and smell it and hold something else in the other hand and start to think about mindfulness and getting all of the craziness out of their minds and focusing on the moment. It's really lovely. The art is beautiful. I think this book will do very well for us. It's a little bit outside what we've done in the past. It also has a page plus um, portion that is Blanca doing a few different exercises that kids can watch and follow along. So I think this is going to be a very neat book. Next. Everybody's book, The Story of the Sarajevo Haggadah. We will be marketing this both as a Passover book, but also as a general Jewish history book. This is the story of the Sarajevo Haggadah, which is a real Haggadah from um, centuries ago in Spain. It's a Haggadah that is given to a bride and groom, and it's a beautiful illuminated Haggadah. And the interesting part of this story is that not only does it get passed down from generation to generation, but as things happen in the world, other cultures, not just Jews, take care of this Haggadah so that it continues on. So it survives for centuries in different countries. Scholars have considered it a treasure. To protect it from the Nazis, a curator smuggled it out of a Sarajevo museum and hid it in a village mosque. 
And on Passover 1995, during the Bosnian War, the Bosnian president actually took the Haggadah out of its secret hiding place to show the world that they were protecting the Haggadah and that it still exists. Um, it does exist today. You can go to the museum in Sarajevo and see it there. It's a beautiful story about cultures coming together and various people working to keep this Haggadah alive. Again, a lovely story. Next. A Feather, a Pebble, a Shell. This is a nature story by an Israeli author illustrator who goes through different parts of Israel. It's a bit of a travelogue, but in, a, in a dealing with nature. And she goes through Israel and sees different kinds of birds and animals, and she portrays them beautifully. She's a watercolorist. And as she goes through different parts of Israel, she finds these different items. And in, you can see in the lower right corner of each spread, it tells a little bit about the item that she found. And she's very careful about leaving these items in place so that kids learn not to necessarily pick up and take away anything Thing that they find in nature, but also to leave it there. Um, books about Israel are fraught these days. There's absolutely nothing political in this book at all, um, but we want to be able to take Israel and show it to the world in a beautiful and non-political way, and this book is a way of doing that. Next. All aboard for Noah's Ark. This is a really cute story. It's a take, of course, on Noah's Ark. Noah's getting ready. He's building the ark. He wants to have the animals come onto the ark. Um, and he has these two little hedgehogs, Lionel and Dolores, and they insist that they can help Noah, but he keeps blowing them off because, you know, they're little hedgehogs and he's got a lot of other things on the mind. But as it turns out, these hedgehogs are really the answer to Noah's problems. How is he going to get the animals to come to the ark? Dolores designs an invitation. She sends it out. She figures out a way for the animals to get there. They help figure out how their food will be distributed on the ark. They help figure out how to send the dove to look for land. And in the end, Lionel and Dolores are the heroes of the story. It's a very, very cute and funny take on Noah's Ark. Next. This is our second Bible story. It's called The Apple Argument. It is by the wonderful Jane Yellen. The prose is beautiful. She's a pro. This is an ecological take on the creation story where the humans have to learn how to take care of the world and they find out that it's not necessarily so easy to do so that if you want food you're going to have to create a garden you're going to have to dig you're going to have to harvest it's not simply a matter of pulling an apple off the tree the snake does play a role in the story but only a small one the focus is really on the humans learning how to take care of the earth and again the um, illustrations are just gorgeous Next. This is not a cholent. So a cholent has become a popular thing in the Jewish culture. I had never heard of a cholent when I was a kid, but now this is a very popular thing. It's a stew. You know, you're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath. You're not supposed to use electricity or your gas stove. And so this was a kind of stew that was developed where you create it on Friday before the Sabbath begins, and then it cooks in a basically turned off oven or very low oven throughout the night because you can't touch the oven. So in this story, there is a little girl who lives in Australia, a Jewish girl, and she wants to submit her family's cholent to the contest that they're having. The trouble is that she has an Iraqi background, and so her cholent is actually called a tibit, and it is not the same kind of cholent that everyone else is used to. A typical cholent has stew meat and potatoes and various things, but her cholent is really different. Amira's cholent has hard-boiled eggs, pieces of chicken, and other very unusual ingredients. And during the contest, everybody watches what they're doing and keeps saying, this is not a cholent, this is not a cholent. But in the end, her cholent wins the contest. And in the end, there is a recipe for tibit, which is the kind of stew that she makes. This is an own voices story by an author who is from an Iraqi background and also did live in Australia. And in the illustrations, you'll see some um, different creatures that actually live in Australia. So it's an unusual book and a lovely one that teaches about Jewish multiculturalism. Next.
Last but not least, we have a middle grade novel called Things That Shimmer. Uh, the Shimmers are a group of girls in the 1970s or 1973. They are the cool girls. They have a clique in the junior high. Uh, Melanie Adler would like to be part of this clique, but she's got a couple of things going against her. For one thing, she's a a plus student and for another thing her mom suffers from PTSD and she's trying to keep this a secret her mom is afraid of many things doesn't want to go out and Melanie doesn't want people to come to her house and so it's it's tricky being in junior high and having a mom like this at home until she meets Dorit Shoshani an Israeli girl who has moved to her community and Dorit's dad was in the um, 67 war and has also suffered from PTSD. So Ronit is, um, Dorit, excuse me, is familiar with PTSD and what that means. So the girls become fast friends, but eventually Melanie has a chance to join the Shimmers and she takes that opportunity, but that puts a rift between her and Dorit. Finally, the girls reconcile. Um, Dorit does move back to Israel, but they become pen pals and they remain strong friends. It's a coming of age story about bullying and what it's like to be a junior high kid. I think it's gonna do well for us and PJ Arway is taking this story. So that wraps it up for Carbon.